Hello guys and welcome to another Division 2 video. It's your boy, Chaotic Gamer. Today's video, I have a build for you that can be used in the Dark Zone as a part of a team to counteract the people running around with sticky bombs and mortar turrets. I have encountered a lot of this. My friend Alex, who joined me in the video for DZ Adventures, he uh, he gave me this build. He hasn't quite worked everything out. This like obviously he hasn't mid maxed it, but it does work. I went and tested out in PvP. It wasn't very good footage, so I haven't shown you it because I didn't get a chance really to have someone hit me with a uh, a really high damage sticky bomb or a really high damage mortar turret. It was mainly just low, like 10 people each going rogue. There was a couple groups and everything. And I outputted some decent damage. I run this build slightly differently, but I'm going to show you how my friend Alex runs it. Because the damage is still very good there. So, otherwise, let's get into the build. I'm running Technician Specialization on mine. He runs Survivalist. There's pros and cons to each. I run this because of the Jammer Pulse. For running Technician, having an extra skill tier, having one skill tier is really good, and I do like that. If you don't want to run the Jam Pulse running Technician, you can run the Artifizer Hive, and it just it boosts a lot of stuff there. For my weapons, my main weapon is the Famous. It's a brilliant PvP weapon, as everyone knows, and... You know, you can't really go wrong with the good Famas and Optimist in a PvP build. No matter what the uh, what you're specializing around. The attachments, I'm running crit chance for the site, crit chance for the uh, under barrel. And the barrel itself is crit chance. And I'm obviously running the 20 round mag there. Then we move on to my other gun here. Tactical Vector. I run this as a secondary because it is a high burst damage gun even when you're only running one or two reds. For this, I run the attachments slightly differently. I've got crit hit damage there for the red uh, on the site. My under barrel is crit hit chance. My barrel is crit hit damage. And then again, I'm running a 20 round mag. You don't need as much crit chance for the vector because it has the specced core attribute of crit chance there. So you don't have to worry too much about it. Then if we get on to our secondary, I'm running the Liberty. The Liberty is great when you're running the Bulwark Shield. Mainly because, you know, th this is kind of the specialization around this whole build. Liberty or Death. Hits grant 2% weapon damage, stacks up to 30 times. Then Headshots consume all stacks repairing your shield for 3%. So whether you want to keep going for body shots and then when you really need it, hit that headshot, you can keep your shield alive quite well. Or you can just constantly go for headshots. You can still keep your shield alive very well, but, you know, you're also dealing some more damage. So it's whichever way you want to go about it when using this build. Then if we get over to the mask, I'm running a 511 mask. I run three 511 gear items here to give me the hazard protection. And this one, all the rolls on here will be hazard protection and explosive resistance. That's the ideal way about it, and as high armor as possible. Again, on the backpack, it's 511 armor, hazard protection, explosive resistance. The mod I've got on the 511 backpack is crit chance mod. I run that just to raise the crit chance of my gun a bit higher when I'm using the FAMAS. You can run whatever mods you feel are best with this. Literally, use this as a template and make your build, uh, your playstyle around this build. And it works extremely well. My gloves are Seska, just to give me extra crit chance. I've got hazard protection. I would love uh, explosive resistance instead of crit chance there. But I'm working with what I've got here. Then we go on to the chest piece, which is Yal. This gives me 10% hazard protection for running the one piece. And I don't have hazard protection on here, but I would love to have hazard protection in place of health. 
Then we go into the holster. We're running 511 holster. Again, armor has protection, explosive resistance. Now, the Sawyer's knee pads are a must in this build. And honestly, they're brilliant. You get the explosive resistance armor. You don't get hazard protection from them. But however, you want this for the talent. Stand your ground. Cannot be staggered by explosions, which is brilliant. Hit, people hit you with an EMP bomb, don't get staggered. People hit you with a mortar, don't get staggered. You can keep on charging through. As well, when you are the manhunt and you will keep maintaining position, you have the ability to boost your damage by another 30% just by staying in one spot. And it, when you move, say they push you, you've got 10 seconds while moving to maintain that 30% and then it goes away. And that's very good. Now, if we move on to the talents, the proper talents that make this build a lot stronger, we have Adrenaline Rush here. Very good because this build is meant to be up in people's faces. And if you get the right rolls, you can have up to 1.6 million armor. So 20% of 1.6 million is extremely good. And you use Adrenaline Rush to proc Intimidate, which is great for boosting your weapon damage when in close quarters. You're going to be in close quarters a lot, so any bonus you can get is a good bonus. Now, skills, I run the Jammer, uh, jammer Pulse, because it's good when people want to push you with your, their shields and stuff, and they've got Stinger Hives, Mortars down, and everything like that. You can just jam, and they'll go bye-bye. It's absolutely brilliant. Bulwark shield is good because then you can take advantage of the liberty. And you know, it's it's all about taking every advantage you can, especially in the dark zone. Because there are no rules there. You know, the meta, people want to use meta, cool. You come in with this, people who are using the sticky bombs and mortar turrets aren't going to know what hit them. So might as well keep that bulwark shield handy for when you do push. If we move on to the stats... My FAMAS is 67,000 weapon damage, 27,000 PvP damage, 46 crit chance and 45 crit hit damage. Don't worry about the crit hit damage being low. It's not meant to be that high. It is a tanky build. Then your headshot damage 75. If we move over to the SMG, 65 weapon, uh, 65,000 weapon damage. The PvP damage is 21,000. You got 55 crit chance, which is why I said you don't have to worry about your crit chance with the SMG. And 55 crit hit damage, 70% headshot damage. You only really want to be using this as a fallback weapon if you run out of ammo with your FAMAS. And you have no shield. If we move on to the Liberty, you have 3, 000, uh, 327,000 weapon damage. 108,000 PvP weapon damage, 36 crit chance, and 45 crit damage, which you don't have to worry about. With the Liberty, it's all about hitting those headshots, which is why your headshot damage is 125%. Now, if we move over all the way down to the armor, with just under 1.5 million armor, you can get that up to 1.6 if you mid-max the armor on this build. We're running no armor on kill and no armor regeneration. It is worth in your team having a healer, especially for a build like this that is going to be everywhere pretty much. No health on kill. You've got 20% incoming repairs from the 511, but this is where it gets interesting. Here we have a 57.5% explosive resistance, and this can actually go all the way up to 60 or 70 percent i think if i remember correctly and uh 68.2 hazard protection and you can raise your other hazard protections very nicely i've got higher burn and bleed resistance because a lot of people are using stinger hives and so on you can obviously raise it how you want it to be but when you've got a shield that is rocking 13 million health there's no much where you can go wrong. You can put more crit chance, more crit damage. It's whatever you feel is going to work best for you. And again, this is merely a template, guys. So, test this build out. Give me your thoughts. And remember, this came from my friend Alex. I'm giving him the credit for this build. It does work. 
and I hope you guys use this to counteract the current metas that are in the dark zone. Peace out, guys.